series continues tonight. Have you ever looked at your dog and thought, is there any way that animal is related to a wolf? Absolutely. <laughs> You've seen my dog. <laughs> he can't even find the treat when we put it on the floor. Well, Randy Meyer joining us. And the relationship between wolf and man is the reason that we have our pets today. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's kind of hard to imagine when you look at, say, a Pekingese or a poodle that there's a wolf in there somewhere. But there is. How we got from the powerful hunter that roams our northern forest to man's best friend is less mystery, though, and more history. It's believed early man learned how to hunt by watching packs of wolves. Ancient cave drawings tell the story. And it was a wolf that crept close enough to prehistoric man's fire, looking for a scrap of food or maybe a companion that over time created a bond between man and beast. Thousands of years elapsed, all the while man peeling off genetic traits from the wolf that fit into a human's world. Rock! Get the ball. Eventually, man's best friend was born, taking countless forms like the Labrador, the mini golden doodle, even the mutt. I love her so much. It's always a joy to bring her to the dog park. It's hard to imagine the wolf, which still roams the forest today, as the genetic grandfather, so to speak, of all dogs on Earth today. Even the smallest of our pets, like Rolo here, have wolf DNA. That's fun. L. David Meach has been studying wolves for more than 60 years. For him, it's not hard to imagine how man's love of dogs began with an appreciation for wolves, especially when you consider 40,000 years ago, it was all about food. If they were to have raised some wolves um, such that the wolves were, were uh, tamed to them and all, these wolves probably would have done some hunting themselves too. And uh, it's conceivable that um, the, the people who lived with these wolves um, would have found that, um, well, we can get some ex something extra to eat uh, when these wolves kill something. From there, jump forward to 14,700 years ago. Archaeologists have discovered remains from that long ago where man was buried next to his buddy and what by then had evolved into something more dog-like. This display at the International Wolf Center in Ely shows the amazing skeletal transformation from wolf to various dog breeds, an amazing evolution in body proportion that took hundreds and hundreds of years. Dr. Meach, how did we get from wolf to Labrador or Chihuahua or whatever dog you want to name today? Well, that t just takes selective breeding. Um, and um, it's a matter of, you know, you have to have something in mind when you do that. You select for, for certain traits. So if you want a small animal, you if you have a lot of them, you take the smallest and let them breed. And you just take the smallest uh, of, of the results and let them breed and, and keep selecting for smallness if you want. But unlike wolves, today's pets suffer all kinds of maladies not found in healthy wolf populations. Continuous breeding to keep bloodlines pure is often why. Why do dogs have hip dysplasia? Why do wolves don't? I think in natural selection is one reason. So a wolf with bad hips probably isn't going to be able to mount, breed, live, catch things. And then in our situation, when we've, we've developed these dogs, we've, we've looked at dogs for looks, sometimes function. So we're breeding them not for natural dominance, like happens in the wild. And in the wild is where wolves belong. As dog-like as they may seem at times, wolves are not dogs. Wolves still possess all the characteristics that an apex predator needs to survive in the wilderness, including avoiding man. Man's best friend, on the other hand, is today an entirely different species, one that relies on humans for food, for play, for shelter, Here's a good boy. and for affection, but in return, rewards us with so much more. Now, tomorrow night we continue Wolf Week, and it might be a little easier for you to see your dog in the stars of that report. We travel to northern Minnesota with members of the DNR and Fond du Lac Reservation to an active wolf den where pups are being studied to figure out why only about half of all wolves born survive. That's tomorrow night on Wolf Week.